So hi there, Happy New Year from Mountain Boys. Today I'm going to be tying a Pertagon nymph and I called my buddy Adam a few days ago and I asked him what his top three flies of 2020 were and this was the first one on his list. So uh, Pertagon is most typically used uh, nymphing, specifically Euronymphing. So it's a, a nymph pattern that you'll see tied on a standard nymph hook or Adam's variation that he likes the most is on a jig hook. Well, I'm out of jig hooks in stock because I well tied some for Adam and then I ran myself out of stock. So today I've got my old favorite standby nymph hook here, a Daiichi 1560. And this is a 1x strong, 1x, 1x long nymph hook. Um, this one's really, really good for any of your beadhead nymphs uh, that don't need to be super long, yet they need to just be just that extra little bit more because you put a beadhead on them. So, uh, color variations on Pertigons. Ones I've tied here for Southwest Montana in the past have uh, been in olive and orange. Um, Adams, the ones he used this year uh, that he was such a fan of, were done in red and black. And you can, you can see, you can alternate the, the uh, abdomen and uh, kind of the hot spot colors back and forth. Uh, whatever you feel like, really. Uh, and whatever seems to work well for you. Maybe tie up a bunch of variations uh, in color and see what the fish uh, in your area hit the best. So to start with, um, I'm going to do this in red and black. So I've got some 70 denier ultra thread here and I already missed a step. Getting ahead of myself here. So, I've got a 2.3 mil bead head on here, and it you can see how much this thing kind of falls and wobbles there around the end of the hook. So, one, it's brass, so it needs a little bit more weight, and two, we need a way to secure this a little bit. So I'm gonna come in with some 0.015 lead wire and give it maybe four or five wraps of lead wire here. You don't need a lot. Um, you basically just need enough to secure that bead head and then peek out the back of that um, bead head there. Any more, and uh, this, this fly has some pretty extreme taper. So any more than that, and you'll start to really screw with your taper on this fly. So go ahead and use my dull scissors. Trim that off there. Use my thumbnail. Kind of pinch in these ends. Press them in. Get them cleaned up more or less. Slide that back into the bead head and smush it back in there. So you can see it's almost totally, um, totally enclosed in that bead head. So now I'm going to come in with that. 70 denier ultra thread. And this stuff, it, it lays really flat, but man, this stuff is slick. And if I were to do my normal, how I would normally um, snip, get rid of my tag end here, if I was just gonna pop it, this stuff especially, you'll create yourself a whole bunch of awful fibers. So you wanna cut this stuff and don't have a whole lot of tension on it when you do it. Because like I said, you don't wanna fight those extra fibers coming off here. So I'm gonna wrap it to where I'm about even with the bend in that hook. Now, I guess the traditional recipe for this fly would call for Coke de Leon fibers for the tail. Well, that stuff is really expensive when you can find it. And so I've taken to using just normal um, pheasant rooster tail. And I take about four of these fibers. I'll cut them evenly off the feather there. And you can see I'm left with almost a three inch long set of fibers here. I don't need near that much. So just to make my life easy, I'm gonna snip off about half that length off the butt ends to work with here. I'm gonna give it a simple pinch wrap here at the back. One more loose wrap. Now I can Pull them forward, 
to get them the length that I want. And maybe just about the length of um, where you have them tied in to the eye of your hook. You don't need them much longer than that. So once I get them where I want, again, I don't tend to trust this ultra thread. So I'm going to end up tying these forward almost clear back to the lead wire wrap that I had. And I'm being pretty particular about my wraps now, keeping them smooth and even, covering up those, those feathers. It's probably not important, as important when I'm doing a, you know, a red wrap around kind of a brown feather. A lot of that isn't going to peek through. It's a little bit more important if you're going to um, be using a lighter thread over a feather like this, because then you might get some more color variation on the top end of the fly there, which, you know, maybe it's not a bad thing. Um, but I do notice, like when I'm using the orange, that I can see some of those fibers peeking through. So trim off the end there, and we're pretty much we're done with the red now. So I just made a few wraps for fun. Come in with a whip finisher and just give it, you know, maybe two or three or four turns with the whip finisher. You don't need a whole lot on this because we're going to be seeding other thread on top of this. Again, trim it off carefully because this stuff is kind of a pain. It, it tends to be kind of fibrous and if you don't cut those ends well or you end up breaking this thread, it's kind of a nightmare to work with. And um, another thing, if you're going to go with a red or an orange hot spot at the front, it also doesn't taper as well as this unithread does. It tends to, to fall off a lot easier. So now, come in. That time I can just break this thread really easy. I like working with this uh, unithread a lot more than I do that ultra thread. But it doesn't have quite the the luster and the sheen that the other thread does. So I'm going to come back about a quarter or a third of the way down the shank and I'm going to start building that extreme taper here at the end. And you want to be careful you don't get your wraps cattywampus because you don't want your bead head to sit you know cattywampus either so you want to make sure yours are smooth and even. And once again, my thread management is not the greatest sometimes when I'm working on something like this. Sometimes I'm bad about keeping even pressure and an even length on the thread coming out of the bobbin. And you see I fell off a little bit there. That's all right. I'll just go ahead and build it back a little more. So there we go. That's a pretty good steep taper coming in to where it's about even with that bead head now. And I'm going to go ahead and whip finish this. Again, you don't need to get extreme with your whip finishes here. One, two, three, done. Because this is going to be resin coated when we finish up here. So go ahead and trim that off. Um, another step, um, I like to do this, is take some black nail polish here, and I'm just going to give a little simulated wing case with a dab of black nail polish on top of that black thread wrap onto the bead head a little bit. You don't need a lot. Just enough to kind of give it a little bit something else. Something else that'll peek through the resin there. Just there on top. Just a little spot. That's all you need for a wing case on this. You know, you could even do a single coat of resin and then come in with a Sharpie marker and hit it with a Sharpie and then do another coat of resin on there too. And that might actually, it might be a little faster, but I kind of like doing it this way. Even if it means I have to wait for, you know, I was going to say waiting for paint to dry, but, you know, waiting for nail polish to dry. It's kind of annoying sometimes. And you don't want to rush putting on your uh, your UV resin. 
uh, until this thing is uh, all said and done. Because I did that on a, on a previous fly. I rushed it a little bit before that thing was totally dry. And uh, it ran a little bit. So it, you know, you just got to let it set up some. But when you're ready for it, here's the UV resin I'm using. And this has the flow viscosity. So it will, it will flow. You know, gravity will catch this stuff and it will start to flow down on you. So when you put it on, you really need to have your UV flashlight handy there to start this setting up so you don't get a big bulge on the bottom of your fly and it stays where you want it to. You might start at the back here. Just a thin coat on the back, working towards more and immediately ready with the UV light there to start setting that stuff up so it doesn't all flow onto the bottom. And I'll rotate the, the fly here in a minute and hit the underside of that top piece. I really wanted to get on that quick. So this stuff's pretty neat to work with. I hadn't used it until this year, but I've started using it on these Pertagons and then in place of like an epoxy wing case on like a Copper John or something like that. Uh, I've started using this stuff and it works really well. Or even, you know, where I would normally just do a heavy lacquer th uh, head on, a, on any other type of nymph pattern. I've been using this stuff and it's, it's pretty slick. But you need to get yourself, you know, $10, $20 UV flashlight. Um, I would also recommend wearing a pair of sunglasses like these natives right here with the uh, sport flex lenses that are, you know, so good at blocking that blue light anyway. Um, they work great for this because you don't want to be staring into a, into a UV light straight on. It's not a good idea. So there we go. That top piece is probably cured enough to handle. And if I hadn't mentioned it before, I'll mention it now that this fly in particular has kind of made me think that I might want to get a, a rotating vise now, bite the bullet. I've done without one for all these years and done just fine. But there are some flies like this where that rotating vise would be super handy. I get a dab on there. And you see when I turn it over like that, I'm not even bothering to go further back on the fly now because when I applied it on top, it pretty much ran down onto the bottom anyway. Another thing you need to check is the way this stuff flows. Just use your bodkin here and make sure that the eye of your hook hasn't gotten any resin down inside it because that will obviously prevent you from tying it on later. So yeah, eye on this thing's clear. Um, I would say less is more with the UV resin when you use it. Sometimes I, I end up turning it over again and putting more on top and I think I tend to overdo it sometimes. So maybe just once on top, once on bottom, enough to kind of accentuate that um, taper there that you have and kind of bring out the bulge in the bead head a little bit more. That's probably all you need because when you see this, this thing when it's done, I mean, it pretty much looks like a little torpedo there going in the water. And this is a, I guess I will talk about the kind of the, the criticism of tying it on a standard hook is the way these things um, ride in the water, you know, they're going to ride, these ones are going to ride hook down, hook point down. Whereas with the, the jig head, when you do like with a jig hook, jig hook style, that'll flip itself around and it'll be a lot less likely to snag. I think that's why Adam likes them so much tied that way. But you know, this works too. Um, you're just going to be a little bit more likely to, to snag tied like this, but that's just, you know, like any nymph, nymph rig. If you're finding you're snagging anyway, well then you need just to adjust your weight or 
adjust your tippet or something so you're riding with just a little bit more off the bottom. But uh, I think he likes he likes them that way with the jig head so he can kind of just bounce them off the bottom and roll them along the bottom and not have to worry about getting hung up as much. But that's it. That is a size 16 Pertigon and that's kind of the the torch variety there with the coloration with the the red backing and the black uh, extreme black taper up to the bead head. That's it. Simple fly. And I'll see you again in a few days uh, when I can find some time to uh, tie next on Adam's list of favorite 2020 flies. Take care.